the basement there's a battery disconnect switch make sure that's off so your battery is not supplying power to the RV's 12 volt system as you come in the main door you'll see this uh, circuit board you've got the 12 volt system with fuses and the flippable breakers for the 120 volt system in the RV and uh, if you take this cover off there's four screws there and they they stay in place with a little clip there you can remove this cover and on the back of the cover you've got the wiring diagram and here you've got uh, the main uh, box that holds the whole system and once you remove that you're into nothing this space and that is where I'm going to install the 50 amp surge protection you can see here that this is the six gauge wire and that is the main power that comes in from the plug and I know that because it's the biggest <laughs> and plus when I installed uh, this before I um, well actually this is a leftover from the last fifth wheel I had and installed and I think that was like in 2010 so so I can put this back to the way it was when I sell the RV I'm going to take this one out and hook it to the uh, EW EMS electrical management system and then on this side and then I'll use a piece of this to connect back to here this is what I'm installing today it is the model EMS HW50C made by Progressive Industries and it provides full RV protection against all adverse power conditions high and low voltage protection lost open neutral protection open ground protection surge fault indication amperage remote display anyway this has saved our bacon on our last RV many times and I will this is one of my top mods I will not be without one of these I've got the line input here from the cord it's now attached where it's supposed to be input here ground three different colors or hook tail two one two and three like they're supposed to now I'm going to hook up the other side to the fuse box. Alright, late afternoon and I have got the side going to the fuse box done. And you can see the line readers are here. That's part of the system that measures the current coming in to both uh, 120 volt circuits. There's two of them in a 50 amp circuit. And so uh, that's what this is and now I just have to hook this part to the uh, junction box here the power overall power box and put it back in its location in there okay that kind of looks like the beginning pick but that is post wiring of the EMS that is from the output and I'll show you it fit, also fits in the hole I've already tried it very nicely but you can see here this is the output and it goes over to the output from the EMS cover and the input line here goes down to there now I could secure this EMS to the floor but with all the wires it, it's not going to move around because the wires connecting the EMS are heavy duty 6 gauge plus the floor itself has uh, vinyl on it that bow flooring so uh, I have a feeling it'll be fine just sitting there loosely so to speak now the, the monitor I've decided to put it over where the tanks are held because most of the time when I looked at uh, the line in and, and various issues uh, that that kinda occurred with electrical I was outside more than inside so I'm gonna put this outside route it through the bay over there and I'll show you that ok 
Okay, if you look there, you can see the telephone wire coming around. That's going to the EMS. And I wanted to put it somewhere in this area here that uh, wouldn't mark it up, that I could remove it and take it with me uh, for my next RV if I wanted to. And uh, everywhere I looked, you know, uh, is either in the way or I didn't want to mark it when I took it out and uh, see the hole there. So what I decided to do is mount it on top of the GFC plate right here, uh, outlet cover. And you can see here that there's no problem at all operating it. Um, and the little screws there don't protrude out very far, so uh, shouldn't be any issue. Um, with it being located there, we'll see if current from AC causes an issue, but I don't think it will. We will see. And I know that I can find these covers, another GFC outlet to put there really easily and cheaply if I decide to remove it. So that's it. I've got the plug in there. When I plug it in, I can come right over here and read the power. I almost forgot. I put um, the little power code indicator in here that's got the little, what you call it, um, the error codes that way. I probably won't ever use this outlet, but if I do, I can just remove this, put it back when I'm done, and just set it right in there. That way I can see the, the error codes. And there she is working. Line 1, L1, 125 volts. Line 2, 125 volts. Okay, for the test, here she is put back into place. Let's open her up. I had uh, 50 amp turned off. And all these are up now uh, for the various things. Let's turn power on and give it a test. We'll test the microwave and the fireplace, which are, because I'm only on 120 volt, 120 volt. Now I heard the converter come on and the typical beep. Microwave seems to be doing okay. come over to the the heater and I hit the power button well so far so good it seems to be working seems like it uh, is doing the job it's supposed to do this is Brent signing off with a EMS install <laughs>